but take a look at some burning questions right now for you, Pete. When you look at this offseason, what are some things that really kind of percolate in your brain that you go, I'm really curious how this is going to play out? Well, I think Otani is the easy answer. Everybody is excited to see what the future holds for this guy. Where is what everybody's talking about? And I, I think that's interesting enough. But how is he going to be used, Adnan, is the most interesting question. Yep. If we're sitting here as, as a front office and we're talking about signing Shohei Otani, we're talking about who is he on our team? Because it, that's obviously how much money you're going to give him and what spots is he taking up. We know in 24 he's going to DH. But yep. after that, I think it gets real interesting. This guy comes back and he is who he is. We certainly know he can start. But when I watch what the Angels have had to do, they've certainly had to baby him and, and try to pitch him once a week. Mm. Is he going to relieve? Is he going to be a closer? Is he going to be a full-time DH and then the team's closer, like we saw in the World Baseball Classic? I think that's super interesting, a, a way to deploy him. I think he, instead of being a closer, he could be a DH and then also be the swing guy in the most uh, pivotal moment that the manager decides. Mm. Hey, Shohei, go get loose. You're not going to hit for a little bit. I might need you to get out of the seventh and eighth bridge this gap yeah. we've just never seen anything like this and I think it's so interesting the conversations that these front offices are having in 25 is he a starter on our team Adnan yeah and how do we build our team is he going to play a position because the guy can play the outfield or play first base we watched Bryce Harper just make the transition there's just so many conversations uh, being had in these front offices to, to get to the number mm. in the years of who's Shohei going to be not where he's going to be. So at the World Series with our buddy Dave Fleming, of course, is a great job, voice of the Giants. And, and Fleming and I both said the same thing. We go, all right, if he's a closer, maybe this is a dumb question, but he's hitting in the bottom of the eighth. How does he get loose then for the ninth? Well, we watched it. He was running back and forth in that World Baseball Classic game to get on deck and then, oh, gosh, I'm not going to hit and go and do that. I think it's interesting um, if, you know, over in, in Japan, the, the bullpens are underneath. Yeah. Just as the hitters hit underneath in the cage and walk up and kind of go on deck, I'm wondering if he could possibly get ready mm -hmm. underneath and, and, you know, and, and be ready to go and still hit. Yeah. Just a very interesting, uh, again, unicorn-type yeah. situation that we've never seen. I think it's uh, intriguing the front office conversations that they're having to have yeah. before signing you. I know they're not calling it specifically Tommy John, but it feels like it's going to be two-time Tommy John he'll have overcome. So as a starting pitcher, there's some risk. So given your choice, if you could have him back as a starter in 2025, as a closer, or as a swing guy, which is kind of like your point with the high leverage, which one would you choose, all things being equal? I, I, I think I would put him in the relieving role because I, I could build my starting staff. I could, I could know what to expect and ride these guys. As a starter, I was used to pitching every fifth day, four days off in pitch. You can do that. Guys can throw 200 innings, and I think the game is going to – work back to the art of the starting pitcher coming back. Yeah. For me, if you're keeping him healthy, we know that if you're going to win the World Series and you're going to go to the playoffs, you've got to have a good back of the bullpen. Yeah. This guy is dynamic and can win you games. He could possibly throw one or two times a week, three, four innings to close these games yeah. if you wanted to. It's a good point. I like him as a closer, but not just a one-inning closer. He can be a two- or three-inning closer. I'm telling you, the front office conversations that they're having of how he's going to be deployed yeah. is so unique to anything we've ever seen before. For because he led the league in homers. Correct. He's the MVP on the offensive side of the ball. And I've heard some thought, even though he's not going to hit next year, or if he doesn't, I go, listen, he's, gonna, excuse me, not going to pitch. He's going to pitch, no matter what. Like, he, remember, he came oh. here, and his whole point was, I want to do both. He's too good not to. He's as good when he's healthy and out there. He's as good as a starter as we have yeah. in the league. We've seen that. He, he made Mike Trout look silly yeah. in a, a huge moment. He's as good as we've seen on both sides of the ball. He has to do both. So that's how Shohei Tani will end up being utilized. We'll find out this offseason again. He will not be pitching in 2024. He will be hitting. A DH and closer potentially could be an idea. Meantime, rule changes impacting how teams will approach free agency. In case you're curious, the last three seasons. So the time of game, obviously, this is great news. Done at two hours and 40 minutes. Literally almost 25 minutes we shaved off. The runs per game went up this year. Back to level we saw a couple years ago. The average did go up as well from, from last year. And then the on-base percentage now three twenty percent, so incremental use there. What is it specifically you're looking at here, P, that you're curious about? Well, I'm, I'm looking at roster construction and how these teams are going to go about putting their rosters together now that the rule changes have shown that there's different ways to winning. Power has been taking a, you know a, 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 such a large seat at the table. And if you don't hit home runs, we remember that Cleveland team last year. Oh, they can't win. They can get there, but they can't win. Mm. This Arizona team was built around speed, contact, playing 
playing really good defense. And yes, Christian Walker, Corbin Carroll, and Alec Thomas, they could run into some balls, but they created havoc and was just a few wins away. And look, if they don't give game one away, that's a different World Series, and they possibly punch their ticket. Yeah. So for me, when I hear Jerry DePoto at the general manager's meeting talking about contact. Yes. And him High contact, good speed. Look, Adnan, we haven't heard that in, a, in, in the last few years. We heard strikeouts don't matter. Get your A swing off. Well, we're starting to see now that fundamental baseball wins championships. Yes, analytics can get us there, but if you're going to win a championship and punch through, you're going to have to play fundamental baseball. You're going to have to put it in play sometimes. Strikeouts do matter yeah. in the postseason. So yeah. I'm starting to watch these teams uh, try to put a well-rounded baseball team together, not just all or nothing swing and miss type approach. So it's uh, it's fun and exciting. It sounds funny to say as a guy who grew up watching 80s baseball, but it was so refreshing to see Sack Bunce again in the World oh, Series. <laughs> right? Perdomo was so good at laying it down, and then you manufacture that run. It's old school baseball. Well, like fundamentals it. win. That's pure. Yeah. And, and when you're starting to see Ron Washington, you're starting to see Dusty Baker and all of these older type guys have success. They're having success around motivating their guys, but they're playing really good fundamental baseball baseball and doing the little things that you have to do. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. We'll see how, like you said, those rule changes, the fact that 84 win Arizona Diamondbacks got the World Series by doing the little things right, how that impact for agency, we'll find out.